I'm Carrie Pena, and this is a special Front Doors TV one-on-one -on -one interview. With me today in studio is MJ Rind, the president and CEO of the Piper Trust. MJ, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. We have so much to discuss. The Piper Trust has been incredible in the response to the COVID crisis. The amount of grants that you have issued in such a short period of time, emergency grants, more than $9 million. Can you talk to me first about that? Sure, I'd love to. You know, Piper Trust has the most incredible board of trustees and they really pushed us as a staff to get going and not wait. So we divided up into like three different categories. We first made grants to human service organizations, then we made grants to arts and culture organizations, and then we turned our attention to, to the medical needs. Mm -hmm. And it is a big deal to fast track grants like this. How are you able to do that? Because a lot of times grants are submitted and it takes months, sometimes years to get approval. You're absolutely right about that. And not wanting to take a long time, we analyzed every grantee for the last 10 years and awarded grants to them because we knew we know them, we don't have to do the due diligence, we kind of follow them for that whole period. So we were able to just surprise them with a check. There was no application and there will be no reporting. You have sent out messages of hope to the community. I mean, that's really what the Piper Trust is all about. And we're going to talk more about the roots of the Piper Trust in just a moment because that's such an important part of the story. Um, but I read on uh, your website that you messaged this to nonprofit leaders. Hope matters in times like these, and it's why trustees and staff of Virginia G. Piper Charitable Trust are reaching out to you today to share messages of hope. Yeah, you know, we really do believe that hope is important. It's so easy to become terribly discouraged in times like these for with your social isolation. There's financial stress, there's illness, there's death. So we, we really want to keep people hopeful. Yes, yeah. and inspired. And inspired. And you are helping them do that in so many ways, not only with financial support, but you've also teamed up with Front Doors Magazine. Tell us about the partnership. And this is an effort to promote and support nonprofits. So you partnered with uh, Front Doors to highlight the community coming together and the importance of that. And in this particular issue, you are highlighting the organizations that you are supporting at this time. That's right. We. You know, Front Doors is such a credible and great media outlet that it's wonderful to have the opportunity to partner with them. And we have an amazing nonprofit community here in the Valley, and they do so much good all the time. But particularly right now, it's time to highlight their hard work, their efforts, and to message hope not only to them, but to the broader community. And let's let's talk a little bit more about the areas that the trust concentrates on. You you kindly touched on that off the top, but arts and culture, children, education, healthcare and medical research, older adults and religious organizations. And I know you and I have chatted off camera, but you I mean you obviously have a heart for all of these areas. Older adults, you're particularly concerned to make sure that those folks are all being taken care of not only the needs being met, but they're being loved. Yes. You know, Virginia Piper was one of the founders of Foundation for Senior Living, and she really had the heart for the, for the older adults, and that's continued on the work of the trust. We see so many examples of people, you know, without family, totally isolated, without money, um, and there are people like FSL who have just come to the rescue just done a great job. And you also, I know, feel so um, connected to the legacy that you're carrying on. That means a lot to you. It means a lot to me. I knew Virginia Piper personally and just respected and admired her because she was just an amazing human being. Can you tell us a little bit more about her and why she started this trust? Sure, I'd love to. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. <laughs> um, Virginia, you know, was born in the Midwest, raised in the Midwest, knew how to take care of her neighbors. And when she met Paul Galvin in the 40s, he had already started Motorola and was extremely successful financially. And he had already started uh, with his own private foundation. 
So over the years, she learned that technique and how to do good grant making from him. And so 40 years after he died, she wanted to make sure that their legacy could continue and started the trust. How powerful is that, that her legacy lives on, I mean, every day in all of these nonprofits and organizations? It is amazing. I, mean, I think she would be so pleased and so stunned to see the work that her generosity has generated. And having been someone who, who knows, who knew her and who continues to carry on that legacy, what do you think it was about her personally? Obviously, she had a huge heart. She had a huge heart and she was incredibly humble. I think she believed that she was given this wealth totally to support her community and its needs. And we're really lucky that she lived here. What can we all learn from her? A lot of people out there are struggling today and I think that uh, being inspired by simple things can really help us all on a fundamental le level. What can we learn from the person she was? You know, that is such a good question, Carrie. I think learning to be a good citizen, a generous member of the community, and whatever generous is to you, and really being a participant and a helper of people. You know, when she talked to people, she was paying attention to the person she was talking to. You know, she would be in a room, she was probably the most important person there, but whoever she was talking to, felt like they were the most important person there. I think yeah. if we can all treat each other with that kind of dignity, we'll be better off. Well, it's interesting because it strikes me that the way the trust was built out is, is just what you said. She was listening and then meeting specific needs. Because mm -hmm. there was. is a specificity. Oh, yeah. And, you know, healthcare and medical research to her was the most important thing because she felt if you didn't have your health, none of these other things are going to matter very much. So we've, we've analyzed her giving during her life and that's how the six core areas were developed. I love that. And if you could talk to me a little bit about um, the support of ASUs, but I can't let you go without talking <laughs> about my sun devils. So ASUs, <laughs> uh, Biodesign Institute, they received a generous grant from the Trust for Innovative Work to help mitigate the pandemic. Let's talk a little bit about that. ASU has been a trusted partner for 20 years now, and we always um, look forward to being able to work with them. And Dr. LeBear is the Virginia G. Piper Chair of Personalized Medicine, so obviously we followed his work. And so when this ASU student was the first person to get COVID-19 in Arizona, Dr. Crow was faced with a big dilemma of how to take care of thousands and thousands of students and staff. And so then Dr. LeBear had this idea that he had a lab that he had used for another purpose that he could change out pretty quickly and start not only making the test kits, but performing the tests. And they have like a supply of 70,000 swabs or something. They really went to work. He had hundreds and hundreds of volunteers to help him. And they just pivoted and it's amazing. That's what I was gonna say to talk about um, this. So you issued, if I, if I had my facts straight here, a $2 million emergency grant to boost ASU's COVID-19 mm -hmm. preparedness in these areas. So testing healthcare workers, first responders and other people with essential jobs, assembling uh, nose and throat swab kits, test kits for healthcare providers, and manufacturing personal protective equipment such as face shields through the 3D printing. There's a lot to be proud of, and I know mm -hmm. it's not just ASU, but U of A and NAU, all of our universities right. have really have all stepped up. done an incredible yeah. job. Um, but just talk a little bit more about what it means to be able to support, I mean, $2 million, that's a substantial amount of support for ASU. It's a big, it's a big number for sure. Yeah. But the equipment that he needed to, to be able to do 24 seven and have backup, these robots are really costly. Um, so that's part of the reason it was that much. And then to buy all the materials, some staffing, it's just, you know, it adds up quickly when you're doing really high tech stuff like that. What is your message for the public who's watching right now as we try to navigate this in the coming months and who knows how long all of this is gonna go on? What is your message? My message is just to maintain that hope. And I think the more we can look to the future and know that eventually we're gonna come out of this and we're gonna come out of it in some ways stronger. You know, we're already seeing improvements to the environment 
we're seeing fewer accidents because we're driving less. We're seeing telemedicine um, really go to the forefront in ways that it hadn't in the past. So start thinking about the good things and, and try to just think that there are people like Virginia Piper around that really want to make their lives better. It is that 2020 marks the 20th anniversary of the Piper Trust. So what has this crisis done to your plans and what's next? Thank you for asking that. Um, you know, I love the fact that we've been around for 20 years, except the fact that that means that it's been that long since Virginia died. Um, we, the trustees, set aside an extra $20 million in grant making to um, give to the community in celebration of the 20th anniversary. Most of it, well not most of it, all of it was for capacity building, which is helping strengthen the organization's backbone. And we are switching some of those from capacity building to just general operating support, if that's what the people need now. Yeah. So we put a little bit of that on hold and we'll pick it up later when things are more normal. The community is grateful to you. Well, thank I mean, you. more than $9 million in emergency grants in such a short time. I, I can't underscore to the audience just how astonishing that is because there are oftentimes a lot of layers to go through to get access to money like that. So bravo to you and to your team for leading the way and for helping where help is so desperately needed. Well, and MJ. bravo to our board too. Yes. They, they're amazing. To all involved, well done. And for more information uh, about the trust and all of the amazing work that they are doing and will continue to do, as we said, it's the 20th <laughs> yeah. anniversary, you can visit uh, Piper Trust. Org. Again, MJ, thank you very much. Thank you, Carrie. And thanks to all of you for watching. Take good care.